Good evening. I'm Dr. Charles Priatel, Superintendent of the Altoona Area School District. I welcome you to our second webinar regarding the opening of the junior high school for students in the fall. First, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all your efforts and hard work as we got through the spring with the distance learning situations that we had to deal with. Your efforts were truly Herculean, and I appreciate all of the time you took and all of the dedication you showed to your, to your children and to your school to make those things a success. Today, we're gonna to talk about how we're gonna meet the current day challenges of COVID-19 and the reopening of the Alton Area School District schools. This evening, we're gonna go over all the aspects of our reopening plan and what you can expect to see and what your options are coming back to school in the fall. At this time, I'd like to turn over the presentation to Assistant Superintendent Brad Hatch to walk through all the aspects of our reopening plan. Thank you. Good evening and thank you to Dr. Priatel for a welcome. A lot of information this evening regarding school reopening. I know that it's, it's, it's a hot topic of conversation in the community and uh, just want to assure everyone that as we move forward, our, our school reopening plan has been really a collaborative effort between school administrators, um, all of the different stakeholders here at the district, as well as taking in, into consideration all of the information that we got from our, our teacher and our parent and, and community surveys to put together a plan that has been approved by our school board and will be submitted to the state of Pennsylvania for approval. Tonight, we wanna to focus on uh, six main areas. Number one, our health and safety monitoring, uh, looking at the parental rules and the district rule as we move into the start of the school year. Talk about transportation to and from school, uh, what district transportation will look like and what you can expect, as well as what arrival and dismissal will look like for all of our students, whether they be private transport, district transport, or walkers. What the breakfast and lunch program and our food service program will encompass, what transitions during the school day will look like, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, what that's gonna look like and what is required, what is suggested, and you know, what social distancing and personal hygiene, education, and protocols are gonna be utilized throughout the school day. And talk a little bit about classrooms and how social distancing and scheduling considerations are gonna allow us to deliver a quality rigorous education to all of our students. And then finally, we wanna talk about educational options that are available to all of our students K to 12 and what different learning platforms and attendance plans uh, parents can consider. We're gonna follow that up with uh, specifics about the junior high school and what our newly uh, realigned six to eight junior high school can expect, as well as uh, talk about a survey that's gonna come out to all of our families tomorrow to ask you what your intentions are for the reopening plan for the start of the school year and the varying options that are available. When we talk specifically about health and safety monitoring, this is really a collaborative effort between our parents and our families and the school district to make sure that everyone, our students and staff are all safe. What we are asking from parents is that you conduct the health screening of your child on a daily basis prior to school. I'm sure that this is something that you're already doing, um, but really be vigilant about this as we move into the school year. Parents as recommended should be looking for the following, temperatures greater than 100.4, a cough, shortness of breath, headaches, body aches, fatigue, diarrhea, runny nose and congestion, or loss or altered sense of taste and smell. These are the symptoms that, that are out there for us to monitor. These are also symptoms that we'll be monitoring while student is in school. If your child is experiencing this, these symptoms, please keep them home from school and consult with your physician regarding next steps. Um, the specific one that we want everyone to pay very close attention to is the temperature monitoring. If a student's temperature is running a fever of 100.4 or greater, we do request that you keep that student home and consult with your physician regarding next steps. The, the other big thing is, is from a communication standpoint is to be available and to make sure that the school is able to get a hold of you in the event that we have to have a plan for a child pickup. Update your child's emergency contacts. That information will be sent home at the start of the school year. Uh, please review that very carefully and make any adjustments to cell phone numbers, contacts, or other information that might be vital for us in a situation where we are trying to get a hold of you or an emergency contact. What you can expect from the school district. 
uh, we will be conducting a health screening upon arrival at school of all students that will include a contactless temperature screening. If a student's temperature is 100.4 or greater, we will send that student to the nurse to contact home to have that child picked up for further, further medical attention uh, from your individual physicians. We will be monitoring symptoms throughout the school day, and if necessary, contacting families and working with our healthcare professionals here within our buildings. You, you can expect regular communication um, from the school district and immediate notification if your child is determined to be symptomatic of any of the symptoms of COVID-19. We will conduct daily health screenings and symptom monitoring of all staff as well. We feel that it's very important that this isn't just a student issue, but it's also all of our stakeholders and anyone involved in attending school throughout the school day. You can trust that we will maintain a clean and disinfected environment for all of our students and staff. One of the things that we have prided ourselves on is always having facilities that, that are at the utmost in terms of cleanliness and safe for our students. We have ramped up those efforts as well, uh, procuring specific misters and other disinfecting materials that will help keep our building safe and disinfected throughout the school year. We will provide sanitizer and education and opportunity for personal hygiene for our students and staff. We will also provide face coverings for students that are not able to provide their own. And we will work with families and students on any individual need or concern that you may have that is specific to your child. Skip, skip the slide there, excuse me. Transportation and arrival and also looking at our dismissal patterns. The school district will, will, will provide appropriate transportation to any eligible student. Our buses will be limited to 48 riders and our vans to five riders. We've been working very closely um, with our transportation to pro provider to look at protocols and procedures to help maintain safe riding to and from school. Face coverings are required on all school district transportation. Loading and unloading practices will be implemented that will limit direct contact and help students maintain social distance. Assigned seating will be implemented and enforced on all transportation. Students are required to wear a face covering when entering the building and then exiting the building to and from transportation. Parent provided transportation will be coordinated with designated drop off areas and pickup locations that will help maximize social distancing. Upon arrival, all students will report directly to their assigned classroom where a health screening will be conducted by their classroom teacher. Students will be able to acquire a grab and go breakfast that they will take to their assigned classroom. Our hallways and locker access will be staggered to ensure social distancing. Movement throughout the buildings will be directionally assigned and monitored by staff. Dismissal will be staggered, maximizing social distancing and dismissal will be coordinated at the classroom level and adhere to directional expectations. Parent pickup locations will be designated and bus and van lineups will be coordinated to maximize social distancing and limit any group gatherings. Our food service program for our breakfast and lunch programs um, is being worked out with our provider METS and the school district. We highly encourage ca cashless transactions by utilizing our online payment options or sending in a personal check to your, your child's building. A grab and go style breakfast option where students will take their breakfast selection to their classroom to eat will be provided to all students. Social distancing will be practiced in food and checkout lines throughout the district. Staff will limit contact by entering student information into the transaction system. Breakfast is available to all students and provided on a daily basis. Our lunches will be staggered and spaced out to limit the number of students in the cafeteria at any given time. Tables will be spaced out and the number of students at each table limited to ensure social distancing. Specifically to the junior high school, we typically had three lunch times throughout the school day, with each being uh, allocated to a given grade level. We have increased that to six with two designated time frames to decrease the number of students in the cafeteria by 75% at any given time. Lunchtime schedules will be staggered to limit the number of students in food lines and lunch options will be limited to fewer choices daily. Students can always bring their own lunch to school 
and take it to the cafeteria to eat during their designated lunchtime. All feeding areas will be sanitized between lunch sessions, including student tables and all serving areas. Face coverings are not required while students are eating. Transitions during the school day. Obviously in a junior high school setting, one of the, the, the main differences between elementary and secondary is that you do have periods throughout the day that do require transitions between classrooms um, and to and from picking up school materials at student lockers. We will be scheduling so that transitions during the school day will be limited to necessary movement only. When possible, students will remain in the setting and instructions move to their locations. All of our transitions will be staggered to allow for the minimum number of students to be in the hallways at any given time. Scheduling modifications will allow for increased time in between classes to accomplish this. Typically, class change times allocated three minutes for students to get from one classroom to another. We'll be increasing this by at least double to allow for staggered dismissal and arrival at all of our classrooms. Students will be required to limit their locker visits to morning arrival, lunch, and dismissal. All transitions will be monitored to make sure that students are practicing good habits and maintaining social distancing. Students are encouraged to hand wash and sanitize regularly throughout the school day, especially before and after their lunchtime. Face coverings are required during transitions in the hallways, including arrival, dismissal, and class change transitions. Personal protective equipment, a hot topic of conversation. To be clear that all students and staff are encouraged to wear face coverings at all times. All students and staff will be required to wear face coverings when social distancing cannot be maintained. This will include while on school district provided transportation, upon arrival in the building, and until the student is in their classroom during any transition in the hallway, at dismissal until the student has exited the building and has been picked up or has arrived at home by walking, in class when social distancing cannot be maintained. This would be small group settings, individuals working in close proximity with other students or with their teacher. This will be directed and monitored by the classroom teacher. If special circumstances or medical concerns prevent the student from wearing a face covering, that would be a circumstance where that would not be required. Face coverings will be available at all schools and on school district transportation for students that are not able to provide their own. We will have the option of both face coverings and face shields available to our students and to our staff. We encourage all students to provide their own face covering so it's something that they are comfortable with within a school setting. Social distancing and personal hygiene are very, very important. It has been chronicled by CDC, Pennsylvania Department of Health. Um, to stop the spread, these are some of the most important things that we can practice. The CDC and Pennsylvania Department of Health have emphasized the importance of social distancing in preventing the spread of COVID-19. The school district will make every effort to ensure and monitor that social distancing practices will be implemented and adhered to. All staff will be trained and provide professional development on implementing these practices and educating our students on the importance of maintaining social distancing. The CDC and Pennsylvania Department of Health have also emphasized personal hygiene practices such as the use of face coverings, frequent hand washing, and use of sanitizer to disinfect hands. All staff will be trained on implementing these practices and educating our students on the importance of proper personal hygiene and limiting direct contact with others. Water fountains will not be available to students. However, students will be permitted to carry a clear water bottle with them throughout the school day. Classrooms and instruction. Social distancing is gonna be a very important part of what we're doing in our classrooms to help maintain as much normalcy and fluidity of instruction that goes on within all of our classes. Individual student desks are gonna be utilized in all school district classrooms. Desks will be spaced and organized to maximize social distancing. Instruction will be delivered on a face-to-face -face basis for all students every day. When class instruction involves closer proximity learning, face coverings will be required and appropriate interactions will be monitored. Instructional materials will not be shared 
And in the event that we do have equipment and materials that need to be utilized, they will be sanitized after each student used. Schedules have been modified to ensure staggered transitions, the limiting of unnecessary contact between students and staff, and increased time will be allotted for transitions as they will be monitored by staff to ensure safety compliance throughout the school day. Tomorrow morning, we will be issuing a, a survey, an intention survey that will be sent to all of our families, uh, asking you to commit to an attendance model for each of your students. There will be links on our social media sites to this to the survey as well. We're asking that all of our families complete this survey for their students one time. If there are families that have multiple parental uh, residences, we ask that you consult with one another prior to completing the survey and only uh, complete the survey one time. Schooling options. This has been a hot topic of conversation. I want to make sure that we clarify that every student in our school district will have multiple options for their schooling preference as we move into the opening of school. Families will have the option to choose from multiple attendance models. A traditional attendance model will mean that your child will attend their home school on a daily basis. If your child and family prefer a virtual learning model, the virtual learning model is where students are provided with their education in a predominantly online environment that will be educated by classroom teachers during the day. This is similar to what you experienced in the spring. However, the rigor and uh, the, the daily instruction will look almost identical to what you would receive in a traditional setting, except that you will be taught virtually from your home. Our high school will be opening due to COVID related construction delays. All of our students will be opening in this model. Our junior high school and elementary, depending on the, the feedback that we get from our survey, will dictate the use of this model at both the junior high school and the elementary. If we have enough students um, that are requesting this model, we will make accommodations so that students are instructed virtually for the start of the school year and as we move forward. The Altoona Cyber Academy is where students are provided with an online curriculum facilitated by Cyber Academy teachers. Students will have a defined curriculum with flexible instructional hours based on their needs. The questions that we're gonna get are, what is the difference between virtual in the Altoona Cyber Academy. The virtual instructional model will look most like a regular school day. Students will be expected to get up in the morning at a normal school arrival time and work through their, their regular day schedule in a virtual environment. You will see both synchronous and asynchronous instruction. Those two terms mean that synchronous would be somewhat what we're doing now, face-to-face -face instruction where there will be direct instruction by the teacher in addition to activities, assessments, assignments, and other items that would be posted online in the Google Classroom platform that was utilized in the spring. The Altoona Cyber Academy is a standalone full-time cyber academy. Well, students will be set, scheduled into a virtual curriculum, a cyber curriculum that mimics the Altoona Area School District curriculum and is facilitated by school district teachers off regular school hours. So collaboration and communication with teachers would take place after the normal school day, and it would be largely asynchronous where students are working relatively independently, facilitated by teachers in each subject area. One of the questions I get a lot and the phone calls that I get a lot are, are parents inquiring about homeschooling their child. Now, I just wanna make sure that, that families understand that homeschooling is something completely separate. Homeschooling is where families commit to providing education to their student with curriculum and goals that are then submitted annually by families for approval by the school district. A homeschool certifier then attests to the fidelity and the completion of the goals by the family. Essentially, homeschooling means that you are taking responsibility for educating your child. Um, so those are the four options that we wanted to define and the three options that will be available on the, uh, the survey that you will receive tomorrow are the traditional setting, the virtual setting, or the Altoona Cyber Academy. If you would like more information or, or inquiry in terms of homeschooling, you can contact my office and we can walk you through 
that, that application process. Our high school was completely reopening um, due to COVID related delays in a virtual setting. So all of our high school students for the, uh, for, for the month of September um, will be in a virtual environment and that will be evaluated on a weekly basis beginning uh, with the first day of school as to the completion and readiness of our facility to welcome students back into the, uh, into the learning environment. All students at the secondary level will be provided with a Chromebook and instructional materials to actively participate in this learning environment. That Chromebook distribution will happen prior to the start of the start of school. Information specific to the Altoon Area Junior High School. Our student orientation dates, and this is for students only. Sixth grade will be August 27th. Seventh grade will be August 28th. Look for information in your mail pertaining to specific times for those events. New eighth grade students to the Altoon Area School District will report on the 28th uh, for their student orientation. Once again, detailed information will be sent via mail in early August. For this year, due to safety concerns, there will be no face-to-face -face meet the teacher night. Our first student day is Monday, August 31st. Our distribution of devices, and this will be very important. We will be sending home Chromebook paperwork, including the student's permission for Chromebook, as well as their annual AUP agree uh, agreement, will be sent home the week of August 1st. Completed paperwork is necessary in order for a student to be issued a device. If there are any students that have yet to return their Chromebook from the previous school year, you will be required to return that Chromebook prior to being issued a new one. So please make sure that you, if you have not yet turned in your Chromebook, that you can either contact the office to make arrangements to do so, or do so on the date of your distribution. Our tentative device distribution dates are for sixth grade, Monday, August 17th, for seventh grade, Tuesday, August 18th, and for eighth graders, Wednesday, August 19th, according to the schedule that you see below, which will be included in the paperwork that we send home to you. We will do this by grade level, by alphabet, at spaced out times to ensure social distancing and safety protocols are being followed. At this time, we have had a number of uh, submissions that have come in for Okay, um, we do have a number of questions that were submitted via the link that was provided to our, our, uh, our parents and families. So I'm gonna go through those. We also have a, a, a chat line open so that if you have specific questions as we move through, please send those and they will be uh, delivered to the, the moderator here as we kind of move through. So question specific to secondary, well, how will the change of classes work? This will be a coordinated effort and it will be highly scheduled um, and specific what we are looking at is staggering our dismissal from classes, uh, from one class to the entry to the next class, so that there'll be limited students in the hallways during the time that, uh, that our students are changing classes. Obviously in a traditional setting, we have eight to nine transitions throughout the school day from homeroom and first period and moving forward. We wanna make sure that we have a coordinated effort to do so, so that we can limit um, the number of students in the hallway, as well as making sure that they are going the correct direction to limit any unnecessary contact in our hallways. Will the CC, CTC be up and running? I know this is not um, a junior high school concern with grades six to eight, but as of now, yes, our CTC is planning on opening and we will coordinate um, for our high school students to be able to attend the CTC as it would normally be scheduled, even though they are opening in a virtual environment. What is, the, what is the plan if children do not return? As we had talked about in our definitions, there is a virtual plan instructional model, as well as the Altoona Cyber Academy option that will be available to all of our students. Will children be required to attend Zoom throughout the day or, or will work need to be completed for the next day, like in 1920? This will be largely teacher directed. So yes, there will be a level of synchronous education that is required 
So there will be times when students are required at a designated time to engage in a Zoom meeting or engage in an online activity with their teacher. Um, there will also be times when assignments and activities will be provided with a due date given. Um, for students that have IEPs and other accommodations, we will work with those families on making sure that we implement and deliver those IEP accommodations to those students. This is what, how will sixth grade sports run? Let's say, first of all, we hope all, school, uh, all sports run. Um, but for sixth grade specific, uh, football is run through the AFL, which is an independent league, and the CBRC will run all other um, athletic activities, except for basketball. We are planning on having um, school-specific teams that we will run a league for here at the Alton Area Junior High School beginning in our winter sports season um, for both our boys and our girls. Will transportation still be provided? Absolutely. Any student that is eligible for school district transportation will be provided with appropriate transportation, um, either via bus, Amtran bus, or if they have special circumstances, van transportation. Will families with multiple children go at the same time? Um, I'm assuming that they mean will they attend school at the same time? It will depend on level. Secondary students will be attending and transporting at the same time. Elementary students are on a different bus and transportation run because they have a different start time to the school day. So it depends on the level and age of your children. How will online option work if students are in CTC? They will have both a virtual learning platform for their core subjects. And they, if the CTC is open, they would attend the CTC uh, for their, their, their schedule of the day, which will be three periods in their designated program. How will the school deal with positive cases? This is a great question. So if we are made aware of a positive case, we will have immediate contact with the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the Pennsylvania Department of Education as to next steps. And depending on the specific circumstances, we will, will then put into place our notification systems with direct contact students and families and indirect contact students and families. And then direction in terms of what would happen for the school um, would be dictated by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. If we do require any level of, of quarantining, that would then be guided and directed and communicated by the school district. How will you address different learning abilities? And if children do not move classes, how will this be handled? Um, obviously, varying learning abilities are, are dictated by the curriculum and instruction delivered by our teachers. If students have individualized educational plans, those are, are completely and 100% in effect. And we will work with families and students on making sure that we make any kind of modifications to the individualized education plan as it pertains to specially designed instruction, um, any kind of related services and how that would work, regardless of whether they are in a traditional setting, a virtual setting, or in the Altoona Cyber Academy. What does Altoona Area High School virtual learning look like since they are not starting on time? Well, I'm just gonna talk about virtual learning in general. Vir virtual learning is gonna look as much like a regular school day as possible. We were working on different models of what that schedule would look like, but essentially students will work through their day schedule during the day where they will be meeting with teachers both synchronously and asynchronously on educational objectives and activities that will be delivered in primarily a virtual platform. If you recall from last year, we utilized Google Classroom and a lot of the Google applications such as Meet and Hangouts to be able to accomplish that. And that will continue. Um, there will be an increased level of rigor. We're in the process of planning professional development and training for all of our teachers specific to virtual learning and online learning so that we are able to ramp up what we did in the spring. Um, all of our students will be graded according to the school district grading policy. It will not be pass fail. It will be percentage based and that students will earn the grade uh, that they earn in that learning environment. So it, it, we felt like we learned a lot through that process in the spring. We got a lot of great experiences and now we need to build on that if we are put in the situation as to where um, virtual instruction is, is what we have for everybody. Where will students eat at the junior high school to reduce the numbers? We will still use our two main cafeterias. Um, we are planning on each of the cafeterias being at half capacity at any given time. So they seat approximately 250 to 300 students. So we will utilize the space and the tables to socially distance approximately 100 to 140 students 
at any given time. Where will students, uh, is Alton Area School District requiring a liability waiver to return to school? No. However, our athletics and our extracurricular programs do have a waiver in order to participate. All of our students that have been engaging in those off-season practices and events are, are all required to sign that waiver currently. How closely do online classes match face-to-face -face instruction for when my students return to school? We have designed the scope and sequence at the secondary level of all of our virtual and cyber academy classes for that very purpose. They are identical. Um, the planned curriculum for all of those courses is the same in a virtual or an online cyber academy as it is in a brick and mortar. Uh, the instruction looks different. The platform looks different. However, the scope and sequence, what is expected to be learned and according to what pacing guide is the same. So that if a student would move out of one environment into a, into a, a traditional setting or vice versa, that should happen seamlessly. If breakfast is in the classroom, will students be... Uh, Will students be distanced with a mask? Yes. So once again, once the students have entered the classroom, they will be required to socially distance. And we're going to we're going to do that based on where their seats are located. In the event that they are not able to be socially distanced, those students will be required to wear a mask during that time. When a student is eating, they're, they are not required to wear a mask, but teachers will facilitate that distancing as it takes place in the classroom. How will staggered arrival and dismissal work? Um, please give detail. So staggered arrival, one of the things that we've worked on our transportation department with is making sure that our buses are not arriving prior to our teachers being in the building. So we are working with our, our, our teachers union to make arrangements for our instructional staff to be here a little bit earlier than they normally are and leave a little bit earlier at the end of the day. Likewise, we're working with our transportation department to make sure that our transportation does not arrive at school until about five minutes after our teachers are already in their classrooms ready to receive students. At dismissal time, we are looking at dismissing our Walker students prior to our bus students so that our Walker population can be dismissed from the building and exit the campus area prior to our bus students being staggered, staggered dismissal. So we will be looking at buses going out at staggered times. Um, with the construction project, this will be a challenge and we're working with the high school as well as uh, the busing company on how that will look because we will, we will have to stack buses pretty much the entire span of 13th Street down to what would be 16th Street on 7th Avenue. All bus loading for high school and junior high school students will happen on the junior high side of the campus. Amtran buses will be loaded on 8th, 8th Avenue, and we will have buses on both 13th Street and 15th Street uh, at dismissal. So one of the things we're also working on is, is spreading that time out. We, we typically have uh, students exiting the building and getting on their buses and leaving in about 10 minutes. Um, we're going to stretch that out to at least 20 minutes to make sure that we can stagger that, not have big crowds gathering on our sidewalks and make sure that the flow of traffic on and off of buses is maintained. That will be monitored by staff, school police staff, and administrators to make sure that it's being done effectively and that we don't have loitering of walkers or any other students in the area that it could be an efficient process. Teachers will be taking temperatures um, in the morning. We, uh, we have a, a thermometer for every one of our instructional staff. And depending on where they're reporting in the morning, at the junior high school, you report to your first period your first period teacher will be conducting that contactless temperature uh, screening in your first period class. Clear water bottles won't stay cold. Will filling stations be open? Unfortunately, at the junior high school, we don't have filling stations. We have traditional water fountains, so we do not have that available here at the junior high school. When the high school reopens, they have replaced a lot of the traditional fountains with filling stations, and that will be available at the high school. Um, I'd encourage parents to, uh, you know, put, put ice cubes um, in, in, in your water bottles uh, to try to maintain cold, uh, cold water throughout the day. How will virtual attendance be taken? This is a good question. So one of the things we do at our cyber academies and we, we experimented with in the spring is that students will be required to log into a Google Classroom by a designated time to record their attendance. 
Um, so that will be set up based on the virtual classrooms that are established. And if you're in the Altoona Cyber Academy, that is already established and there is a Google Classroom check-in essentially for all of our attendance taking. How will phys ed practice social distancing? Well, we will not be changing into phys ed uniforms uh, for the time being. Uh, students will, will wear whatever they have worn to school for that day. Um, you're gonna see a different look for phys ed. Uh, in terms of the junior high school, we talked today to our, our health and physical education staff about what activities can we implement that we can, you know, we can assure social distancing. So activities um, such as ping pong and some different lifelong athletic activities, physical fitness based activities will be utilized. Um, if we would be in a situation where we would use our fitness room, we will be wiping down equipment as it is, as it is utilized and spacing out the number of kids that are in there at any given time. <clears throat> we will not be utilizing the locker rooms. Um, students will not be issued a, a phys ed locker room and they will not be changing. So we feel pretty confident that with our attendance lines spread out over multiple areas, we will be able to accomplish this. We'll also be utilizing our outdoor facilities whenever possible. What extra supports are available for virtual learning? <clears throat> This, I think this could kind of go multiple ways, but in terms of extra instructional support for students, there would be that regular contact that may not happen face-to-face -face in a classroom, but is available through an online platform such as Meet or Hangout or email um, that you can maintain that close individual contact with your teacher to be able to provide it with individual support. One of the things we're looking at with instruction is that we may not do every class every day synchronously we may have a schedule where odd periods are have the ability to meet synchronously on Mondays and Wednesdays, even classes like periods two, four, six, eight on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Friday as a tutorial day, as a project-based day, or as an opportunity for students to have that direct contact or individual contact with their teachers. Do I have to keep the child with a runny nose and cough home? How many symptoms does the child need to stay home? <clears throat> this is, we don't make that decision for you. Um, obviously, we would encourage you to consult with your healthcare provider as, as to the specifics of the symptoms that your child is, is exhibiting. Um, is there a possibility they may be related to another illness or to a pre existing condition? Absolutely. I mean, health is very individualized and we are not health professionals. So we would encourage you to work directly with your healthcare provider on making the best decision for you. The one thing that I think we're pretty adamant about is that if they are running a fever of 100.4 or greater, that we are requesting that you keep them home. And we're, we're doing the same with our instructional staff as well. Um, is every symptom, every sniffle uh, definitely related to a more serious condition? We can't say that. So we're going to leave that, that determination up to the individual families um, as to what, what you feel is best for your child. Now, I will say this, that we are looking at, at relaxing our attendance requirements. And one of the things that we specifically are looking at is do we require students that have an excess of 10 days of absence to have a doctor's excuse? Because, you know, we're aware that a lot of our physicians and pediatricians are telling you not to come into the office you know, and they're not providing with excuses. So we want safety to be your, your priority and, you know, prioritize your health, prioritize safety. And then we will go from there in terms of making uh, specific communications with families about attendance. Um, attendance is important. You know, it's important that kids are in school or actively engaging online if they're in that environment in order to be successful. Um, so obviously we want to encourage attendance as much as possible, but we also want you to prioritize your, your and your child's safety. Do you need a gym uniform this year? And we'll, we talked about the locker room and gym uniform. The answer to that is no. Um, we do ask that students wear footwear that will enable them to participate when they have phys ed in either court or outside activities. Um, so so non-skidding uh, sneakers obviously would be appropriate uh, you know, for, for students that have phys ed. What if there's a positive case? If there is a positive case, we will have immediate communication with the Department of Health and the Department of Education, and we will be given direction from them, and we will follow that direction as it comes to us in terms of quarantining recommendations, notification of families, doing contact tracing for students, um, we have a whole system in place for that 
but we will take direction and guidance from the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Is there an option for two days in person and three days virtual no longer being considered? At this time, it's not. Um, at this time, we, we are, uh, the options that we're providing are fully traditional, fully virtual, or fully Altoona Cyber Academy. Um, so at this point, we have, uh, we have not looked at offering the, the two-day on, three-day virtual as an option moving forward for this school year. How will virtual learning work with electives and non-core classes? Exactly the same as it would for a core class. Those teachers have been assigned and we will have a teacher that will be providing um, virtual instruction in those elective areas. Now, is it a challenge? Absolutely. So if we have a tech ed course, which is largely hands-on, we'll be looking at, at developing project-based activities, simulations, computer-based activities that would supplement and replace some of the, the, the hands-on activities and projects that would go on in a face-to-face -face environment. Will students that went to a state identified on list have to quarantine or start back as normal? I think we're referring, there's a list um, of 21 states, I believe, where if, if the recommendation from the state is that if they return from one of those states, um, that they, they self-quarantine for 14 days. Um, our guidance is, is you need to look at your individual circumstance and consider what you did while in those states. Um, if you limited contact to family members, did not engage in activities or put yourself in environments where there was high exposure rates, um, that's a conversation that you need to have with your building administrator. Uh, if you're non-symptomatic, uh, we do ask that you contact us and let us know. And then we can walk, we can talk through that process to see which is most, most, most appropriate. Is virtual a realistic option for young students with little direction? Um, and they indicated specific third grade. Uh, we, we did talk specifically to virtual in our, in our last webinar that was geared towards uh, our elementary folks. But I will say that, that virtual is a, is a real option for students of that age level. I do think that there's a challenge um, in terms of what students are comfortable working with independently on a device such as a Chromebook or, or a tablet, whatever it may be. However, I think our kids, the newer generations are, are very equipped um, at being digital natives and in a lot of cases are probably more equipped to, to working virtually um, than maybe some of our older students or even adults. But we will provide the supports and the training to help make that successful for students of any age. Will there be, there be enough masks to accommodate all children? Once again, we are encouraging families and students to provide their own masks that they are comfortable with. However, if students get on transportation or come to school and need a mask, we will provide, the district will provide a, dispos a disposable mask that they can wear throughout that day. Um, with the state mandate, we're kind of assuming that at this point, all citizens have you know, some type of face covering that they're utilizing if they're going out in public, if they're going to stores, whatever it may be, because it is a state requirement at this time, um, you know, when you leave your home. So we're, we're hoping that folks have those, but if they don't, we'll provide either a face shield or a disposable face covering for them. Can a student change from virtual to cyber? Um, we would want to have a conversation regarding any kind of transition, either from traditional to cyber to virtual or back and forth. To, to really kind of figure out what's best for your child and what is the best option for them. And, and if they have challenges, um, you know, what can we do to help, help, you know, help alleviate those challenges or concerns? Who do I contact if I cannot pick up the Chromebook at the designated time? Um, we'll likely look at, um, you know, kind of a, a makeup pickup uh, time. We're hoping that families can come at their designated time because if they do do that, that enables us to maintain social distancing it will also enable us to have a coordinated distribution effort. But if you have a, a, a circumstance where that's not possible, contact your, your building administrator and we will work on a solution for you. Will high risk children still get a schedule if they are virtual? Absolutely, they have a schedule. Um, the schedule will be like it would be if, if they were in school. Um, they will have uh, assigned class periods with assigned teachers and they will work through that curriculum as if they were in a brick and mortar setting it will just take place over a virtual setting. Are children going to be able to talk or will they get in trouble? Um, 
I would never want to walk into a classroom um, where students were not communicating with one another. Um, a busy classroom uh, is an active classroom. We encourage collaboration and communication and, and group work and discussion. So unless they're talking out of turn or talking that's being disruptive, um, no, we want them to talk. We want them to communicate with one another. How will a student with migraines be handled if they need picked up or will a child be able to stay? I mean, if a child has a migraine, I mean, obviously we would work with the family on what your preference is that if the migraine is not able to be maintained or treated in the school setting and they need to go home, that would be a normal dismissal process through our nurse. If there's a pre-existing condition where migraines um, are frequent, and, you know, is, is there a medication process in place um, to help, to help uh, deal with that situation? And that, once again, if you have a specific health concern, just like if they were coming back to a traditional setting, needs to be discussed with the nurse prior to the start of the school year. Research suggests that air conditioning spreads the virus. Will open air be utilized by opening windows? Um, we have a ventilation system built within our building um, where all of our, our classrooms are equipped with, with air handlers that pull in outside air and mix with our, our cooling system and our chillers um, and our heating system. So whether it be spring, summer, fall, it doesn't really matter. Um, we are constantly pumping fresh air into the building through our air handler systems. What are the benefits of virtual over cyber? I don't know if it's a benefit, but, but, but it's a preference. The benefit is, is more regular daily contact with your instructor. Um, you'll have a, a, obviously a variety of teachers. Virtual will look more like a traditional school day. Your children will be getting up at a designated time and they will navigate through that school day during regular school hours with regular contact with their, with, with their teachers. Um, so it, it's synchronous and asynchronous, whereas cyber is primarily asynchronous where they're working more independently, maybe not necessarily during regular school hours. They may not have the regular contact with all of their instructors that they would have in a virtual environment. Will we get a list of supplies that our children need? Um, yes. So likely not until the first day of school, but when children are given their syllabus um, or meeting at orientation, those things can be provided. So all of our sixth and seventh graders will be coming in the 26th and 27th. And at that time, they're going to meet their teachers. So they're going to have the opportunity um, to be given those lists of supplies. You know, general school supplies, obviously kids, We'll have a Chromebook and a lot of our things are done virtual. They're done on, a, on an electronic device. They're done through Google Classroom. So they're stored on their device. But will things like notebooks and pencils and pens and your traditional highlighters, those kind of things be needed? Absolutely. So, you know, your standard school supplies, you could probably plan for, but specifics to the classroom, uh, that will be, you know, that will be issued by the teachers at the start of the school. Can a quarantine student switch to virtual and then back? If it's only a short-term quarantine, um, a one to two week quarantine, I, I would not recommend switching in and out of those platforms. If it was a longer term, our recommendation is that if a student and family are committing to a platform, that it be at least for a marking period. Um, if you have frequent transitions in and out, that can lead to disruptions in the learning. And that's something that we, you know, obviously is not good for anyone and we don't want that for any of our students. How will the district ensure distance in the classroom? And is there a cap number of students? Our traditional class sizes at the junior high are anywhere between 18 and 24 to 25 students. Um, we do have larger class sizes here at the junior high school. Um, so we are fortunate to be able to distance our, our desk relatively well, so that if classrooms have you know, max capacity of 24 to 25 students, that we are still able to maintain social distancing with those individual desks. Um, all of our desks, and this is something that came out from the state, are required to face the same direction. Um, so those are things that, that are part of our planning process as we map out individual classrooms. What if a child refuses to wear a mask? It, it, it is a state mandate that, that's, that students are required to wear a mask. If they have a special medical circumstance or an exception that qualifies, that will be taken into consideration. However, if a child does not have a legitimate 
medical or valid reason to not wear a mask, we would have a conversation with the parent about what other options might be if they are not willing to comp comply um, with, with, with that mandate. And it is that, it is a mandate. Um, so if children, children simply refuse to wear it without a valid reason, that would be a conversation we would have with the individual family. Can I pick my child up for an appointment? Absolutely. What will probably happen is it will not look, you will not gain access to the building. You will come into our vestibule and once in the vestibule, we will, we will discern why you're there. And if you're there to pick up a child, we will have you wait in the vestibule and we will deliver the child to you. Um, that will eliminate uh, the need for unnecessary uh, contact into the building. Um, but we obviously, you know, if you need to pick up your child for an appointment, you would contact the school ahead of time let them know your pickup time. Upon entering, we'll have a school, a school police security officer in that area. You'll talk about what your, you know, what your needs are, and they will then coordinate that with our, uh, with our desk security to be able to call to the office. Will parents uh, picking up have a temperature check? They will not have access to the building, so that will not be necessary. If you choose, choose traditional, uh, can a child go virtual on sick days? Well, if you're in a traditional setting, your sick day would be handled as it normally would. Um, you would have communication with the teacher. They would communicate, like largely you would have a Chromebook. Um, so you'd be able to access your Google Classroom to see what notes and what things were given that day. And you'll be able to access your educational materials with your Chromebook. Um, because that's the platform that all of our teachers are utilizing and pretty much their entire scope, sequence, materials, videos, links, everything they're doing in the classroom is gonna be on there. So you would access it through that Google Classroom. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Uh, will kids still have band or football typical activities? We hope so. Um, we are very hopeful that extracurricular activities such as our co-curriculars um, in the music programs and football and athletics are a go. Um, we are planning right now as if they are a go. PIAA announced earlier this week that their intention is to have fall sports and fall seasons. Uh, that could change. Um, we are planning for having, you know, safety protocols in place for all of our athletic teams in the fall and our band um, to make sure that if we are able to have events and we are, are able to have activities that we are prepared for that. And those protocols are part of our safety and security plan. Will schedules be given before the first day of school? We will likely um, allow parental access to Skyward uh, a week before school starts so that parents can see what their child's schedule will be. We typically issue these during a meet the teacher night, which is something that we are not capable of having this year. Uh, so we will be issuing schedules. Mrs. Mangan, are we gonna give them during orientation? We have paper schedules. We'll also give students in, in sixth and seventh grade um, paper schedules, copies of their schedules on that first day of orientation. Can students take their mask off at their desk for fresh air? Once again, if social distancing can be maintained in the classroom, they don't have to wear their mask in the classroom. Uh, if it cannot be, if they're working in a closer proximity to a teacher or other students, then they will be required to wear the mask. But in general, we are hoping that students are, do not have to wear their mask while in the classroom, as long as we can maintain social distancing for those students. My child has trouble coping with the mask. Does he have to wear it? Um, once again, there are provisions for exceptions to the mask rule. However, if the mask is the issue, we would want to have a conversation about maybe a face shield and that being something that is more, uh, more bearable for your, for your individual child. However, if there are medical needs or there are uh, exceptions that we need to discuss, that would be a conversation at the building level with the building level administrator. Is summer band happening? Yes. Um, summer band, I believe, is scheduled to start in two weeks. Um, I think I want to say it's August 8th, maybe. Yeah, beginning of August, but that, but that information will be coming out from Mrs. Myers. Uh, she is the junior high school band director. Uh, so that, look for that information. That information will be disseminated as long as we're able to have uh, <clears throat> the summer band camp that will happen in, in early August. Is virtual uh, learning a consideration for snow days? Absolutely. Um, we have submitted our application for FIDS days. FIDS are flexible instructional days. And we are, did we get approval yet? Or wait, we have approval for those days. Um, so yes, absolutely. Uh, virtual learning is a consideration for snow days 
which will hopefully save our, our June in, from extending. So that being said, I would like to thank everyone for coming on board and, and, and participating in our webinar this evening. Hopefully we gave you a lot of information, answered some questions that you might have. I um, wanna thank our administrative team that has been working tirelessly um, to plan for the unknown and to really be uh, ready for receiving of the students and providing quality educational options for all of our families. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the junior high school if it's specific to the junior high school, or you can contact my office at 814-946-8218. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Oh, once just a reminder, the, uh, the survey will be sent home tomorrow morning via Skylert. So please check your email or look on our social media outlets for the link to that survey. Vital information for planning so that we can look at staffing and other, other needs that we have to be uh, prepared for the start of the school year. Thank you.